Hello teachers, let's pick up where we left off with section 2.2. .2. Uh, we completed quite a few problems in part one of section 2.2. .2. So now I want to talk about something new called equivalent sets. Now in the previous video we talked about sets that are equal. And equal sets have the condition every element that's in one set is also in the other set and every element in the other set is in the other set. In other words, they have exactly the same elements. Equivalent is different. Two sets A and B are equivalent. Notice the notation with a little squiggly tilde right here. A is equivalent to B if and only if, remember definitions read both ways, if and only if there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between the sets. Remember at the end of the last video, we spent a few minutes talking about one-to-one -one correspondence and setting up one-to-one -one correspondence. Not only that, we calculated how many correspondences there will be for a particular sized set. And that's when the multiplication principle, also called the fundamental, fundamental counting principle, appeared. But now equivalent is different. Okay, two sets A and B, well, equivalent is the same, my bad. Recall if two sets are equal, they have the same elements. We just mentioned that. Equal sets are equivalent, but equivalent sets are not necessarily equal. Again, there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between the sets. So for a quick example, the sets one, two, three, in which we set up a correspondence in the previous video, with the set A, B, and C. These sets are definitely not equal because they have different elements, but they are equivalent sets. Why? Because there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between one, two, three, and A, B, C. Fine, right? Now, in your mind, is it, does it make sense that equivalent sets have the same number of elements? Yes, indeed, okay. Now, got an example. Let A be P, Q, R, S. B is going to be the set A, B, C. C is going to be the set X, Y, Z. D is going to be the set B, A, C. And we're supposed to compare the sets using the terms equivalent and equal. I read that backwards, but the same thing. Equivalent and equal. Okay, now we're going to do this one at a time. Okay, we're going to compare... A to B, okay? Now, P, Q, R, S compared to A, B, C. Are they equal? Absolutely not. They are not equal. Why? Because they don't have the same elements. They don't even have one of the same elements. Are they equivalent? You know, that's a little curly line. No, they're not. They don't have the same number of elements, so not equivalent. How about let's compare A to C. A compared to C. Okay, let me highlight for you. A compared to C. What's your opinion? Are they equal? No, they don't even have a single column and element, much less all of them. They're not equal. They're also not equivalent. Why? Because there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence. S would get left out if we did it in exactly the order they're already in. So not equal, not equivalent. Let's compare A to D. All right, so let me get rid of the highlighting here, and I'm going to compare A to D, make it easy to find. So once again, these don't have any of the same elements, so they're not equal. Are they equivalent? No, they don't have the same number of elements either. So all three of these are not equal or equivalent. Now, we've compared A to everybody. Let's start working with B, okay? Now, B to A, haven't we already made that comparison? We don't need to redo that. How about B to C? So let's look at B versus C. And we'll change colors on you. So I'm comparing B to C. Hey, are they equal? Nope. Nope, they're not equal. They do not have exactly the same elements. So, once again, 
struck out on equal. But you know what? Yes, they are equivalent. Why? Because they have the same number of elements. You like that at the bottom there? That proves that they are equivalent. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence. You can map A to X, B to Y, C to Z, and that is not the only mapping, right? There'd be six mappings, three times two times one. Let's move on. How about B to D? B compared to D. Let me erase and re-highlight. Let me really erase. Here we go. And re-highlight B compared to D. Hey, this is fun. A, B, C, B, A, C. Hey, they have exactly the same elements. Look, B and D are equal. Are they equivalent? Sure they are. They have the same number of elements. All right. Okay. Now that's B compared to everybody. Let's move to C compared to everybody. Okay. All right. So all I'm missing really is C to A, right? We did that already. It's right here. C compared to B. We already did that. We're not going backwards. We're going forwards. The only thing we're missing is C compared to D. Okay. Um, uh oh, I didn't even mean to put the equals there. That's not right, right? I'm not solving anything. I'm just trying to tell you, are they equal and are they equivalent? So C compared to D, let's highlight again. Here's C, here's D for your comparison. Do they have any of the same elements? Well, no. One's X, Y, and Z. The other one's B, A, and C. So these are not equal. They don't even share any elements at all. But are they equivalent? And you should say not equal. And you should say, yes, they are equivalent. Why? Because there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. I could put that X with that B. I could put that Y with that A. And I could put that Z with that C, which means that they are equivalent. So there's my little equivalent squiggly line. Now, as always, the book has this typed up. And there it is. You know, they just list it all typed up. We discussed it, so I'm not going to hang on this page. But if you needed to write it down and copy it, super neat. There you go. All right, another definition. The cardinal number of a set S. Now, notice the notation is denoted by N of S. So anytime you see this lowercase n in front of this set name like that with parentheses, that means the cardinal number of S, and that's the number of elements in the set. So once again, if I call the set A equals A, B, C, then N of A is how many elements it has, which is three. That's all you have to do for cardinal number. So I got some examples. What is the cardinality of each of the following? You like the way they said that? Cardinality which means what is the cardinal number. So N of K, how many elements does K have? I'm counting five, what do you think? So use proper notation, we could say N of K equals five. Again, that's the cardinality of K is five. Give me another set. Zero, so in that cardinality zero? No, 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 it's tricky, right? How many elements is in that set? One has got the number zero in the set, so don't let that mess you up. Zero is a number, just like anybody else, zero is a number, and so it is one. So the cardinality of the set zero is actually one, or n of l is one. Next question, x such that x is a real number, and x is equal to x plus one. What? <laughs> so throwing some algebra at you, right? So all the X's, remember, all the X's such that, this is set builder notation, X is a real number, and X is equal to X plus 1. Y'all, is there any number that'll do that? Like, let's just plug in something. 0 equals 0 plus 1. Is that true? No. You can't, that's 0 equals 1. Let's plug in 1. 1 is equal to 1 plus 1. That says 1 is equal to 2. No. Any number you plug in, the right side is going to be one higher than the left side. Is this ever going to work? No. This is what we call the empty set, y'all. X is equal to the empty set. 
And there's two different ways of noting the empty set that I've seen in textbooks, and there may be more. I'm not saying this is all inclusive here. That dude right there is the empty set. It's not the same as zero. This means nothing. Another way to note the empty set is those nice curly braces with nothing in there. Now, what is the cardinality of the empty set? That one's zero. There's nothing in it. Now, if you're still hung up on this equation over here, try to solve it. You know, you can't solve an, an equation with x's on both sides. So what if we subtract x on the left, subtract x on the right? Well, that gives you zero on the left and one on the right. In other words, our x's canceled out. If your x's cancel out, y'all, and you're left with a false statement, no, in no way ever is zero ever equal to one. This is a false statement. It's called a contradiction, which means there are no elements that make this work. Empty set. Now, again, I still haven't splashed up there what the answer is. N of X is zero. There are no numbers that work. And there it is for you. N of X is equal to zero. I think I got one more of these to squeeze in. I mean, just this problem. I got plenty more problems for you. Um, how about y is equal to the empty set? Well, that's what we just did, right? So n of y is 0. There's nothing in the empty set. New idea? A set is finite if its cardinality is 0 or a natural number. Okay, so if it has 0 elements or a specific number of elements, then the set is finite. Example, the set of presidents in the United States. Right now, President Biden is the 46th president. We're working on probably getting a new one soon. So the presidents of the United States is finite. Okay, they don't have an infinite number of presidents. The set, set of planets in our solar system, can you name them? You should be able to name them. How many do we have? It's eight now, right? Because Mars got demoted. It's not really that Mars didn't get demoted. Mars just doesn't qualify for the definition of a planet. I think it's called a microplanet, but that's a different class, right? This is math. The set of planets in our solar system is finite, okay, because the number is a natural number, which is eight. An infinite set, on the other hand, is a set that is not finite. So anything that doesn't have zero or a, any set that doesn't have zero or a natural number as its cardinality is considered infinite. The set of whole numbers is infinite. Why? These little ellipsis dots will tell you right here with nothing after it that it doesn't stop. It goes on forever. What is the highest whole number? Now just also one more thing I want to point out. This says whole numbers. Y'all what's the difference between whole and natural numbers? This guy right here. Whole numbers begin with zero. Natural numbers, also called, called counting numbers, begins with one, okay? But the set of whole numbers is infinite. It goes on and on and on forever. If you give me one, I can always give you one higher. How about the set of solutions to the equation x plus one equals x plus one? And you might be thinking, what? Hey, let's do some algebra. You want to? It's an algebra class, but we need to know how to do this. If you solved this equation, Again, you can't solve it with x's on both sides, so I'd have to subtract x on the left, and I have to subtract x on the right, correct? These x's cancel on both sides, and I get 1 equals 1. Now, you might be going, wait a minute, that happened just a minute ago, and there was a no solution, or the empty set. But that's because we had a false statement. Let me go back and show you that. I'm missing my paperwork. Look, look, you got 0 equals 1. That's a false statement. Look at what we have now. That's 1 equals 1. I know you know that that is a true statement. And whenever your variables cancel out and you're left with a true statement, that's called an identity. And y'all, what it really means is you can plug in any x you want to into this equation and it makes it true. 
try. If you plug in 0, 0 plus 1 equals 0 plus 1. That's 1 equals 1. It's true. How about plug in 11? 11 plus 1 equals 11 plus 1. 12 equals 12. It's true. It doesn't matter what number you plug in. You're going to get a true equation. Therefore, all real numbers make this true, and that is an infinite set. Okay, new notation here, new idea. The universal set or the universe, denoted not universe as in where we live, although that is everything. The universal set is everything that you're talking about in, in terms of a set. So it says uh, denoted by U, notice the big U, is the set of all elements being considered in a given discussion. Okay, all elements being considered in a given discussion. So everything you're talking about in a particular instance. Sometimes the natural numbers is all we're talking about. So when, I, when we build a sequence or a series, we're only plugging in natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're not plugging in one half, right? So that means the natural numbers is the universal set in that particular situation. Okay, so let's set up something to make this more clear. Look at the notation here. Suppose the universal set is defined as, what kind of notation is this? Do you remember? Set builder notation, yes. Okay, so this says the universal set equals all the X's such that X is a member of the U.S. Senate. Okay, it says denote the universal set with a large rectangle. And particular sets are indicated by geometric figures inside the rectangle. Usually those figures are circles. In this case, only members of the U.S. Senate are included in the rectangle. This pictorial represent representation is a Venn diagram. So what I'm about to show you is an example of a Venn diagram. There it is. So that's a Venn diagram. Often Venn diagrams have some sort of circles in there. I'm not going to draw you any because one's coming up in just a minute. But in the instance before it says U is the U.S. Senate. So this big rectangle represents every person that's in the U.S. Senate. Okay, now here comes the rest of the diagram. Consider the members of the universal set U who are females. Since this set is wholly contained in U, but does not contain all the members of U, we denote this set with a circle as follows. So F represents females. So all the female senators would fit in this circle, and everybody that is a U.S. senator is being discussed in the rectangle. So who's not in the circle? Well, it only makes sense that males would be outside the circle. So the circle F, or the set F, is defined to be all the X's such that X is a female U.S. Senator. In other words, all the people such that X is a female U.S. Senator. Okay, let's keep going. Now we want to consider the members of the universal set U who are not females. Remember, I talked about them just a minute ago. This is the set of all members of the set U that are not in set F. We refer to this set as the complement of set F and denoted it by the shaded region in the figure below. Notice this notation real quick for me. Notice this. It's an F with a bar over the top. That is red F complement. Okay. Now, it might be hard in your mind not to read it as F bar, and you'd probably catch me doing it also, but that really, by definition in this textbook, is read F complement. Now, let me warn you a little bit more. I have seen F complement like that with like an apostrophe up there. Okay, so if you go from one textbook to another, um, somebody else's set notation versus somebody else's, keep that in mind. This book uses a bar to represent complement. And what does complement mean? It means everything that's in you that's not in your set F. Okay, so F complements everything in you that's not in F. And let me show you something. I just, I just noticed this. And um, I get these, these PowerPoints, at least I start 
with compliments from the book, not this compliment, but from the book, the textbook, but this is wrong. F bar is equal to all the X such that X is a senator and not female. I just found an error. I try to find them before I record for you, and they're there, but I just found one. So all the X's such that X is a senator and not female. I don't want to say just male, right, because that gets us into a little bit of hot water, but it includes all of the U.S. Senators that are not defined as female, all right? And it's just a typo. This, this statement would have been correct if they didn't have the bar over the F, but remember the definition of F complement means everything that's in U that's not in F, so it's not a female is what's going on here. Now here's another formal definition of complement for us. I've already talked to you about this in the previous slide. The complement of a set A, written as A bar read A complement, is the set of all elements in the universal set U that are not in A. That is, A complement in set builder notation is equal to all the X's such that X is in U and X is not an element of A. All right, let's do an example. Okay, so this says if U equals the set A, B, C, D, I'm going to highlight this to make it a little bit easier to read. U is A, B, C, D. B is C, D. Now, it wants us to find B with that bar over it. What does that mean? B complement. So, you got to tell me, B complement means everything in you that is not in B. Okay, now B is C, D, so that means no C, no D, but what else is in you? A and B. So that's B complement. Okay, pause it. You do the next one. All right, so I was to find B complement. Let's do U complement. U complement. Okay, well, let's write this down. What in the world does that mean? That's everything in you that's not in you. What? Hey, I got some issues over here, too. Ignore that. That's not supposed to be there. Ignore that. Okay, everything that's in you that's not in you. How about nothing? Y'all, nothing. That's the empty set. There's no way you can be in you and not in you. So that's you complement is, is the empty set. On the other hand, let's look at the empty set complement. That's that third one down here. So we did three things. We found B complement, U complement, and the empty set complement. So we're working on the empty set complement. So that's everything in you. Complements always start with everything in you that's not in the empty set. Well, what's that? If it's in you and it's not in the empty set and nothing's in the empty set, is that not A, B, C, D? And another way to say is that is just you. Either one of those answers would be appropriate. It's the whole set. This is the most simplified way of saying it. It's just you. All right, now if you just want to look at their version, there it is. Remember, B complements A, B. That's what we got. U complements the empty set. That's what we got. And then the empty set complement is just U. And again, just ignore this over here. Um, that's, that's from something else. And it's just sitting there bothering me. All right, got another example, don't we? Yes, if U equals all the X's such that X is an animal in the zoo. Okay, that's you. So that's all the animals in the zoo, the universal set. And S, a different set, is all the X's such that X is a snake in the zoo. So S represents the snakes. We're supposed to describe S complement. So remember, S complement, by definition, S complement equals all the X's such that X is what? It's in the zoo, but it's not a snake. 
So how do, why don't we say X is not a snake? I could be more detailed and say an animal in the zoo that is not a snake. That's probably very, that's more descriptive. You want to see what they did? Okay. X such that X is a zoo animal that is not a snake. See, they're very specific, and I, I'm totally about being very specific, but I didn't get specific enough. I even called myself out on it right here, right? I should have said X is an animal in the zoo, because you still have to know that. Come on, pen, work. An animal in the zoo that is not a snake. All right, another example. Oh, we did that. All right, here we go, another example. Now, I like to highlight these things because the way they have questions typed up, sometimes I have a hard time reading it. It says U equals N. What in the world does that mean? Remember what N is? It's the natural numbers. So U is the natural numbers. On the other hand, E, let's do that a different color. E is the set 2, 4, 6, 8, and then ellipsis dots. What does that mean? Keeps going. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. It's all the even numbers, right? And then O is the set 1, 3, 5, 7. What's the pattern there? 9, 11, 13, 15. It's all the odd numbers. Well named. Calling it O. There we go. Once again, we get to find some fun stuff. They want us to find E complement and O complement. Remember, E complement, the definition is er everything that's in E that is not in, I mean, in, sorry, U, that's not in E. Okay, so E is all the even numbers. So what numbers are not in E? But it's still in U, so we're only considering the natural numbers. How about 1, 3, 5, 7, hmm. What are we talking about here? Look, the video is all messing up. There we go. It's PowerPoint issue, I think, because it didn't like my ellipsis dots. So one, three, five, seven. Is that not the same thing as set O? So it turns out in this particular situation, E complement is just the set O. That's not a zero. That's the set O. Okay. Now let's do O complement. O is all the odd numbers. Now, out of all the natural numbers, if we take out all the odd numbers, what are we left with? How about those even guys, right? And then if I'm patient, dot, dot, yeah, I shouldn't be just banging on the on the board here. So, 2, 4, 6, 8. Hey, that, is that not the set E? So, that's kind of a neat problem. The complements were the each other. And just to make sure we did it correctly together, yes, E complement is the set O, and O complement is the set E. And it's neat when that happens. I like that example. Here's another example. Set B is a subset of set A. Ooh, no, this is not an example. This is a definition, something brand new. Set B is a subset of set A, written as B is a subset. Look at that notation. B is a subset of A, if and only if every element of B is also an element of A. Okay, so I mean, what this is saying is everything in the first set is also included in the second set. So you're going to make sure you understand the direction here. So you use that subset notation. Everything in the first listed set is included in the second set. It says when a set A is not a subset of another set B, we write not. Right? That's what we've been doing all along. Like, we, we, so far we have a not equal to at our disposal. And now we have, oh, we also have a not an element of. And now we have not a subset of. Okay, so keep those nots in mind. And I made, I use this one myself, but I don't really know that that's actual notation. But it certainly worked for our application to discuss things without writing it all out. Now this next slide, it's a lot. Okay, it says the definition allows for B to be equal to A. That's very important. The reason this extra line is underneath there is because that's denoting that equals is also possible. So B is a subset of A. That means every element of B is also in A. So they could be the same thing, and that's why they have that line. Okay, so this implies that B is a subset of A. 
if and only if every element of B is an element of A. Okay? All right, so A is a subset of B. Check this out. What if it's both directions? What if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A? Then ding, 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 A is equal to B. If you can say two sets are subsets of each other, they have to be the same set. There is no other way around it. Okay? All right, back to Venn diagrams. Suppose that B is a subset of A, and look, they drew B inside A, because that's exactly what subset means. And B is not equal to A. That's why they made B smaller than A. What is the dot for? To let you know there is an element that's in A that's not, not also in set B. And that's what they're saying. Then there must be at least one element of A that is not in B. And that's called a proper subset. So make sure you know the difference between the notation, this notation, versus this notation. This is just regular old subset, which allows sets to be equal to the, each other. This is a proper subset which means they are not equal to each other. That's why there's no line underneath. That does mean that B has less elements in A. It has to, okay? B has to have at least one less element than A does to pull this off, or A has to have at least one more than B does to be a proper subset. There we go. Back to examples. Here's A. One, two, three, four, five. What does set B look like? Just one and three. Ooh, P's fun. P is in set builder notation. P is the set of all X's such that X is equal two to the N power minus one. And look at there, N is a natural number again. We use that a lot, don't we? N is a natural number. It says identify all the subset relationships that occur among these sets. Then we can do that. All right, now here's what I think would help us out a whole lot. What if, we, is it possible to write P out in like listing notation instead of set builder notation? How do you do that? All right, so I'm going to do it down here, but then I'm probably even going to erase it. So N is a natural number. That means we start with one. So two to the first minus one. Then we'll do 2 to the 2nd minus 1, then 2 to the 3rd minus 1, and 2 to the 4th minus 1. See what's going on here? Okay, 2 to the 1st is 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 squared is 4 minus 1, which is 3. 2 to the 3rd is 8 minus 1, which is 7. 2 to the 4th is 16 minus 1, which is 15. So I'm going to put 1, 3, 7, 15. I am going to put the ellipsis dots and we continue that pattern. Okay? All right, now I'm going to erase all this and we'll see if we can't answer these questions in that space because you don't need all that number crunching right in front of you, do you? All right, here we go. Now we've got to compare just like we did before. Let's compare A to B. Okay? Is A a subset of B? Uh, definitely not. Okay, so A is a subset of B? No, because all the elements of A do not fit in B. 1 and 3 are in B, but that's it. You've got extra stuff over here. So A is not a subset of B. Okay, is B a subset of A? And by the way, these do go both directions. Well, yes, it is, right? Because 1 is included in A, and 3 is included in A. Is B a proper subset of A? Yes, it is, because B and A are not equal. There are extra elements in A that are not in B, so I write B is a proper subset of A. Okay, so that's A and B and B and A compared every way we could do it. Now let's compare A and P and P and A. Is A a subset of P? Are all the elements in A also included in P? And I would say not. I already see one. Two is not over here in P. So, nope. Okay. Is P a subset of A? 
No, right? Because one and three are included over here, but seven is not. Because remember, A just stops. It's just one, two, three, four, five. So P is not a subset of A. Now, if you're not a regular subset, you're not going to be a proper subset. There's no way, right? Because there's extra stuff in here that's not over here. All right, let's do it again. Let's compare. Okay, we compared A and B and A and P. Now let's compare and the other way around, let's do P and B. So is B a subset of P? We'll compare B. It's just the numbers 1 and 3. Look, there they are. 1 and 3 is right over here in P. So yes, P is definitely, B is definitely a subset of P. Is P, is B a proper subset? Yeah, right? Because B and P are not identical. B is just two of those elements that are over here. P has extra things that B doesn't. Okay, so proper subset, no. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Now let's flip it around. Is P a subset of B? Do all the P elements fit in the B set? They do not. Um, so that means it's definitely not a proper subset also. That was a lot to do, right? I bet you followed it. I hope you did. So I believe the next slide is just the books version of that. Notice they listed the elements in P right here. And they tell us B is a subset of A. A is a subset of A. B is a subset of B. And P is a subset of B. P. We didn't do that. Now, if you go back to our analysis, what we really have going on here is we said B was a subset of P, and we said that B was a subset of A, didn't we? And it is. B is a subset of A. B is a proper subset of A. B is a subset of P. All the rest of them were not. So let's go back and look at their answer. Do they have all that? Okay. Yeah, B is a subset of A, but we didn't do A is a, ooh, 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 my apologies. I didn't have my highlighter working. We didn't have A is a subset of A because I didn't look at something compared to itself, but an, a set is always a subset of itself, but y'all, it's not a proper subset. So you can't say A is a proper subset of A. You can only say it's a regular subset of A. And we also didn't do B as a subset of B and P as a subset of P, but it has the other ones that we have listed. They also didn't address proper subset at all. They just asked for subset. That's just me, I guess, not following directions because it didn't say proper subset. I have gone over my time way over. I apologize. Let's shut this one down. I'm going to come back for just a tiny little video for the last part. I don't want to finish it out because this is already so long. It'll have a short video for part three. Y'all have a good day.